Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In front of me here, I have a 2021 Intense Carbine 29er. And I first wanna give a huge thanks to PDR Performance for lending this bike to me uh, to test, to ride, and to finally review for you guys here today. So now let's talk about the specs of the Intense Carbine. Starting with the frame, we have a carbon fiber frame and the size of the frame is a medium that I'm currently riding today. And the total weight of this entire bike this full size 29er enduro bike is 33 pounds. And I think you could, with a few component changes, make that even lighter. So then coming from the frame, let's talk about the suspension. So the suspension is all done by Fox. So in the front, we have a Fox 38 Performance Elite with 160 millimeters of travel. Coming to the rear, we have a Fox Performance Float X2 with 155 millimeters of travel. Coming up to the cockpit, we have 800 millimeter wide bars provided by E13, and they are carbon in a 35 millimeter diameter. The stem is also provided by E13, and it is a 35 millimeter clamp in 40 millimeters in length. The headset is a Cane Creek. Uh, stopping power is all powered by Shimano XT. Quad piston in the front, quad piston in the rear, and both the front and rear rotor are 203. So plenty of power to stop this 33 pound full-size enduro, uh, enduro bike. So the brakes are plenty powerful for this whole thing. Okay, so now moving on to the drivetrain of the Intense Carbine. Practically everything is done all by Shimano except for two things, the bottom bracket in the crank set, and I guess three things. Uh, the chain guide is also a E13. Going to the front here, we have a Shimano XT 12-speed shifter. The cassette is actually SLX and that range is 11 to 51. The derailleur is an XT 12-speed with a clutch. Moving on to seat and seat post, we have an SDG radar seat. Nothing complained there, feels pretty good. The seat post is an E13 infinite dropper. With this size medium frame, it comes with 150 millimeters of drop and that's powered by an E13 dropper post lever and that one feels pretty good. It has a grip tape surface. For the wheels and tires, the wheels are E13 29 inch and they're both alloy. Uh, the tires are both Maxxis Minion, a DHF in the front at 2.5 and then a DHR in the rear with 2.4. So there you have it. There's kind of a overview of the specs here on this intense carbine. Um, now it's time to take it onto the trail, see what it's capable of. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll give you my final thoughts and review uh, on the bike. So with that, enough talking for me. Let's get on the bike and let's go have some fun. All right, Whitetail Ridge, 2021 Intense Carbine 29er. I think this is a perfect testing ground for the Intense Carbine. All right, so up first, the first trail that we're gonna try is Mullet. And this is one of the more difficult climbs here at Whitetail. So this will really test out how the bike climbs, how it feels. Right now, I have the X2 fully open just to see what kind of pedal bob I get. So far, it feels pretty good. Coming up, we have a pretty steep switchback, little jaunt up, power to the pedals. Not bad. Feels pretty good. Not too much pedal bob, which is a good thing. Not bad, not bad at all. Sweet. We got a descent coming up here. Test out suspension. It's gonna get loose right here. All these loose rocks.
All right, we're gonna go down BS downhill. It's one of my all-time favorites here at Whitetail. You can get some pretty crazy speed through here. berm all right cool and then we just turn here and this goes right back to trailhead next trail we're going to be going up is bone crusher so far the carbine is riding so smooth. The 29er wheels keep up the speed, no problem. All right, here we go. Got some rocks, roots. A little bit of drainage. Soaking it up all so well. No problem. Handle that really nicely. Very nice. Here's a kind of a steep climb. Keeping up the speed really well. Flat corner, pretty sandy, pretty loose. Take the double into a flat sandy corner. Final berm into the gap jump. All right, got it, sweet. All right, everyone, we have reached the end of the ride out here at Whitetail Ridge in River Falls, Wisconsin. And unfortunately, we have reached the end of my time here with the Intense Carbine. So now let's talk about the bike, what I like and what I dislike about the bike. So let's begin. So now let's talk about the positives of the Intense Carbine. For the suspension, the Fox 38 and the X2 is a perfect combination. Knowing that this is a full enduro race rig, it totally makes sense that there's a 38 and a Fox X2. Anything that you throw at it, it will absorb and provide you with a really smooth ride. This is probably one of the smoothest riding bikes I've ever been on. So you could give credit to the 38 or the X2 um, or even the suspension linkage system that they have on here. Uh, it was perfect. It was such a enjoyable and smooth ride um, with the intense carbine going with tires i'm really happy that it's maxis minion a 2.5 in the front and a 2.4 in the rear it was actually kind of sandy out here at white tail in the corners with the tire combination i had full confidence going into those corners now let's move from suspension on to braking power in the drivetrain so again all the stopping power is done by shimano xt quad pistons and both sides, the front and rear, have 203 rotors, plenty of stopping power. I weigh about 167 and uh, the bike is only about 33 pounds. So with 
the combination that you have for brakes, plenty of stopping power, so I wouldn't change anything with that. Uh, the drivetrain was great, as always. I love Shimano XT shifting uh, with the derailleur and the cassette range is really good, the 11 by 51. Now let's move into some of the cons I had with the bike, starting with the frame. So this is a medium frame, and if I were to own one of these carbines, I would actually go with the small frame. My Diamondback Mission is a medium frame, but this one, uh, this medium frame actually has a bigger and longer reach. Um, so when I was on the trail, I was definitely hunched over more than I would be on my bike. Um, so I would definitely go with the smaller frame. The bar is being at 800 millimeters. Again, this is a full enduro bike. Um, and you know, some people may not use this for trail riding at all. Um, but I would probably go with a, a more narrow uh, set of handlebars. I'd probably go 780 or 760 uh, if this were my bike. Um, but that's just another personal preference. 29er, I don't know if I'm fully converted to go 29er in the future. Um, I feel like they roll really fast and they keep up speed really well. But as far as maneuverability and just being agile between tighter sections, I didn't feel as confident or fast uh, through those types of areas. So again, I'm kind of iffy if I would want to go 29er. Um, I think for now I'm going to stick to 27.5. It just suits me better with my riding style um, and everything. But overall, I'm really happy and I really enjoyed my time on this intense carbine. Again, I want to give another thanks to PDR Performance for lending me this bike to go and ride and do this video for you guys. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you guys want to see more content and more trails from me, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys on the next trail.